Hi everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. Today we're gonna take a look at the 2023 Honda Ridgeline RTL. And we're gonna answer the question, is this the ultimate gentleman's truck? I tell you what, we're, this truck is concerned as a mid-sized truck. It doesn't really have a lot of competition in respect of being the most comfortable mid-sized truck on the market, but also plenty of interior space for not only passengers, but also cargo, because as you can see right here, you can raise the seat cushions up on both sides. I just have one up right now, but you can raise them both up out of the way. And that gives some options. If there's something you want to haul that you want to keep out of the weather, if it's raining, well, guess what? That's an easy fix. But this particular Ridgeline has an option that you don't see very often, but it is available. That's the tonneau cover. I'm going to show you how that works in just a little while. The exterior color on this model is platinum white. Obviously it has a black interior and we're going to take a good look at exactly what you can expect to find if this is a truck you want to buy as a 2023 model. From the side profile, the Ridgeline does have a nice look to it. From the A-pillar forward, everything a lot more squared off than it was a few years ago. This actually started for the 2021 model year and we'll see the LED headlights. That's going to be complemented by the LED daytime running lights and the LED fog lights down here on the lower portion of the bumper. The blinker nicely placed right here and the active air curtain allowing air to flow through the front end. Let's see if I can give you a daylight shot. There you go, you can see through there now. Air flowing through the front end allowing to improve aerodynamics. And it's not, this, this truck doesn't necessarily have the most brick-like aerodynamics. It actually does have some decent body lines to it, but that helps no matter what. We're going to have the chrome brow that runs all the way across. If you want to see me in the video, hi everybody, there I am reflecting in the chrome. And then the reasonably sized front grill. It's going to allow plenty of air, not only through this area, but through the lower grill right here in for that 3.5 liter V6 that's under the hood. The Honda logo. If Honda does redesign the Ridgeline for 2024, I am pretty sure they will add it, but I hope at the very least they do add a forward facing camera. That will definitely make a difference. And moving on, this is a standard all wheel drive truck. So at one point, front wheel drive was the standard feature, but you could have all wheel drive. Now it's standard across all trim levels. 235 will be the width on your tires. So that's going to put plenty of meat on the ground on all different surface types that you can drive on. The 35 series sidewall, Firestone tires wrapped around the 18 inch wheels. And you will see if it were me with a Ridgeline, you don't need the side steps. Number one, this truck isn't high enough off the ground to worry about that. Number two, that does take away a little bit from the off-roading ability because it brings the truck's height down just a little bit, just having those hanging down there. So for me, I don't think I'd need those, but everybody's different. You might not care. And here with the side view mirrors, body colored mirror caps. We're going to have the matte black finish on the bottom. Turn signal indicators built in. That's a plus because I know everybody likes to have their turn signal indicators in their heated power adjustable, but manually folding, if I can do it, side view mirrors. And speaking of all of the things that people like to see, they also like to know, does it have remote start? It does, as you can see on the remote right here, lock, unlock, remote start. And then if somebody's getting a little too close for your comfort, well, you can hit that panic button right there. And obviously it is a proximity key. You can program that for the vehicle to lock as you walk away and how far away you want that to be and all that good stuff. As we work our way around to the rear, taking a quick look at the taillights, you can see a nice look with everything, the way everything is designed, quite simplistic, but it definitely gets the job done and fits the overall design of the truck. Yep, all wheel drive. You can have that logo right there, the Honda logo and the Ridgeline logo and dual exhaust back here with the exhaust finishers that are indeed part of the exhaust system. So they're not just there for looks, they are functional. And obviously the receiver for the towing hitch, this truck is capable of towing between 3,500 and 5,000 pounds. Your payload numbers come in between 1,509 and 1,583 pounds. And the ability 
to tow and to haul, those numbers I just gave you comes from the 3.5 liter Honda V6. Now this isn't the newer version that they have in the 23 version of the Honda Pilot, but we might see that in 2024. We'll just have to wait and see. For now, the numbers aren't that much different. 280 horsepower for this version compared to 285. The torque numbers for either engine, either version of the 3.5 liter V6, 262. Mated to a nine speed automatic transmission and Let's take a look here at what we have with our gas mileage numbers. Probably kind of hard to see, but I'm going to tell you what they are in case you can't see it. 18 city, 24 highway, 21 combined. And Honda says you should use 4.8 gallons of gas for every 100 miles you drive. And within the confines of the truck is a 19 and a half gallon gas tank in case you were curious to know. And by the way, for those who say, this isn't really a truck. Well, that happens a lot, but you know what? If you want to convince somebody just have them come up and close their eyes and have them lift the hood a few times. This hood is heavier than most full-size truck hoods. I don't know why, but it weighs a lot. And obviously, as you know, this particular Ridgeline does have the tonneau cover over the bed. Now, you won't be able to open the tailgate in the conventional way with the tonneau cover in place, but you can swing the tailgate open like this. And here's what I like. This is a super simple system to use once you learn it. Let me see if I can show you how this works. So it may seem kind of hard to move this release right here. There's one on each side. So here's how it works. All you have to do is pull down on it and then pull back. And then to get it back in place, you pull down like that, or excuse me, you move it at an angle like that. And see how easily that moves? So there's that one. So we'll go ahead and pull down on this one and do the same thing. And then that allows us to get the tonneau cover out of the way. I probably don't need to do all of this to show you everything, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway. Obviously, it has the pieces right here to keep from damaging anything. And then, you know what, let's see here. Here's what we need to do. We need to actually take these. I'm not gonna do all this on camera, but you can move these out of the way so that you can actually fold it flat and take care of whatever you need to. In the meantime, Obviously, you have some tie downs here. You've got the in-bed lighting. Hopefully for 2024, that will go to LED lighting. I do like the use of the space by Honda back here. And in this particular case, you're not going to have the power outlet, but you do have the space right here. That can come in handy in a lot of ways. And that's not the only space that you have back here. And just so you can see what I was talking about here, that's how those releases, those handles for the tonneau cover actually fold into place to allow you to set it down like this. And obviously you have the lockable bed trunk. You can see the lock right there. If you want to lock that, you can use the bed trunk in a multitude of ways. It does have the available partitions to section it off into four different sections. So you can put whatever you want to back here. If you wanted ice in one area and snacks in another, whatever. There's so many great options there. And when you need to drain water, all you do is pull that drain plug out right there. That is a standard feature in case you didn't know. And then right here is how you're gonna gain access to your spare tire. There are some what are called tray bolts right here that you actually will unscrew and you can pull the tray out and actually set it down right here. So a very simple thing to do, very easy, very effective. This is something you don't typically see in most trucks that definitely makes Honda Ridgeline one of the most versatile trucks on the market in every form and fashion. In fact, it's great for tailgating parties, obviously, and yes, you can open the tailgate in the conventional fashion. One thing I would like to see Honda add for 2024, if we see a redesign, would be some door bins down here. Now, it's not a complete absence of an area to use. You do have the cup holders and, or the cup holder here, cup holders on both, but the area right back here for snacks, the cup holders here, and the nice soft touch armrest. The armrest test says, yes, that is comfortable. So that's good. And we'll hop inside here. You do have the nice flat floor. So whoever gets stuck in the middle seat here doesn't have to worry about that really tall transmission tunnel. That's kind of a thing of the past for the most part of most vehicles these days. And we do have the rear air conditioning vents here on the center console. However, one thing that is missing, at least here on the RTL trim level, is going to be connectivity. So there's no USB ports, no 12 volt here in the back seat, 
but you do have the sunroof. I know a lot of people are hoping for the panoramic sunroof for 2023, or excuse me, 2024. We'll just have to see what Honda does. But for now, you do get the conventional size sunroof in the meantime. And by the way, one more thing I do like here, unlike on some other Honda models, you don't just have one rear seat pocket here that can be used for storage of whatever will fit, but also one on the other side. We'll also find the fold-down armrest, if I can get that down, with the cup holders built in. And this particular design, this is what automakers need to be using because in this particular situation, with the cup holders being right here instead of in the front, you can still use it as an armrest when there are drinks stored in the cup holders. And while we didn't see door bins on the rear doors, it's not a door binless truck. In fact, there's two door bins here, the upper and the lower on the front doors. Obviously here on the passenger side, on the driver's side over there as well. More soft touch materials right here. A little contrast stitching, white contrast stitching to kind of break up that black interior. And even the nice lines right here that really give this door panel a nice look. You do have the four-way adjustable heated passenger seat on the driver's side. It will be the same, except it's a 10-way adjustable seat. And we're gonna see those same lines work their way in, down and across the dashboard, and we have the glove box right here. Nothing in the glove box, not even some gloves, even though it's called a glove box, but that is what you find right here. So quite a few things going on there as far as storage goes, a little bit of storage right here, and we do have connectivity here in the front. So you've got the USB and the 12 volt, no wireless charging on this particular trim level, but you do have, like I said, heated seats, unless you live in Canada, eh? You have heated and ventilated. Hopefully we'll see that in the future with the Ridgeline. I think a lot of you would like to see that happen. And the push button shifter, you know, I, I don't personally have a problem with the push button shifter. A lot of people do, but I like the fact that a few of you have brought up that if you had a shifter right here, you pull it back into drive, well, it would be harder to get to a bottle that was in the front or rear bottle holder right here or a cup or whatever's in there because of where the shifter is located. This way, it's easier to just reach across and get to it does save some space and just give some convenience. And the garage door style lid for the center console is right here. Quite a bit of space in there. And yes, you do have additional connectivity options. So USB, 12 volt. So there are a few within the vehicle. Technically, I guess the rear seat passengers, one or so, could use these. They could use the 12 volt to create a second option. So there are options for the rear seat passengers, even though there's nothing in the rear seat area. There's the conversation mirror for when the kids are acting up back there, or maybe when the adults are acting up back there, and it doubles as a glasses holder, sunglasses or whatever kind of glasses you want. You've got the buttons here for the power sunroof and the power rear window back there, the power sliding rear window. The vanity mirror, there I am. Hello, everybody. Thanks for watching. And the lights right there. And let's see how far, excuse me, how far back, if I don't get choked up here, how far back this visor goes. I'm so excited about it, I'm getting choked up. Okay, that does go back a long way. That's exciting, actually, that's good because it doesn't really leave any room for sun to come through unless you were leaned way back or sitting way back in that seat. But we're just getting started. Let's talk about what the driver's going to find. We'll hop over onto the driver's side. And taking a look in through the driver's side door, one thing you'll definitely find here that wasn't on the passenger side, two settings for seat memory. You've got all your controls for locking the windows, locking and unlocking the doors. You can control all four windows and open the gas door to gain access to that 19 and a half gallon gas tank I was telling you about earlier. It does have capless fuel fill. And we're gonna have our adjustments, the controls for adjusting those heated power adjustable side view mirrors right here. You can go into econ mode here and you have some of those safety features right here that you can use as well to turn on and off. You do have Honda Sensing here, which is going to be lane keeping assist, road departure mitigation, adaptive cruise control. Uh, even though it's not part of Honda Sensing, you also had the blind spot information system. So there is a lot going on here in that area. A very simplistic dash instrument cluster here for the driver's display. It does offer up a lot of good information. So 
it's simple but yet very effective obviously you can go through a lot of information using the steering wheel mounted controls here is everything for your adaptive cruise control as of right now because i know it's a common question i'm asked in these videos no you do not currently have low speed follow available or traffic jam assist for the ridgeline again something maybe we'll see for 2024 you do have the paddle shifters here in brushed aluminum for controlling that nine speed automatic transmission everything to control the lighting all around the vehicle including those blinkers i was telling you about those things you need to use when you're changing lanes or turning in front of people so they know what you're doing or in oncoming situations where they see that you're about to turn all of that is useful i don't probably have to be so sarcastic and give you a tutorial on what this is the windshield wiper controls right here that's going to take care of managing all of that. You do have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so you can pair your smartphone and take full advantage of the screen right here. We'll go into reverse and look at our multi-view rear view camera, and you can see that is good and responsive. The three different views. Let me slow down a little bit on that just so you can see everything that's there. You can zoom in there and you can see what's behind you, whether you're backing up to tow a trailer, towing that 3,500 to 5,000 pounds, or maybe you're just checking to see what's behind you so you don't hit anything. And something that I know is really interesting, for the 2021 model here, not only was the front end redesigned, all wheel drive made standard, but also Honda returned the knob right here to control the stereo. Apparently enough of you said, I want that knob to control the volume and turn my radio on and off in my ridge line. Give it back to us. And they said, okay, we'll do that for you. Okay, we're going to get out on the road for our test drive. And one thing that really makes this potentially the ultimate gentleman's truck is the fact that it rides well. And I know a lot of people say a truck's not supposed to have a good, smooth, comfortable ride. Well, if it were a, a full-size truck, yeah, I think I could say that's probably true, even though full-size trucks ride better than they used to for the most part. Even some of the heavy-duty, the HD trucks, ride better than they used to. You know, things change over the course of time. But this is a really nice multitasker because it does have the capability of being used as a truck. It does have some off-roading capability. Being all-wheel drive, it's great in the snow. A few years ago, probably, what was it, back in early 2020, we had a bunch of snow. I think we had eight inches here in Shreveport, Louisiana. That was crazy. So the thing about it is that that turns the ice down here because of all the humidity and everything. Everything freezes up, and it's just crazy. A couple of the employees from Holmes Honda took home some of these ridge lines. And I remember them telling me they had absolutely no trouble getting around. And you do have a snow mode for driving. You have snow, mud, sand. Uh, there's even a sport mode, essentially, down here on the shifter where you go into drive. It has the D and the S. And I know some people call that sequential mode, but essentially that's what it is. It's sport mode. And so there's a lot of versatility here that you may not have with other trucks, especially a truck that's, that's rear-wheel drive only. Even with four-wheel drive, it can be a challenge. But one way or another, this truck definitely gets the job done in a lot of different ways. No matter what people say in the comments, I'll leave the comments down there that say, it's not really a truck, for those who want to have fun responding to those. The technology here, I know it isn't the latest and the greatest from Honda, but it is easy to learn it's easy to use there's not an overload here some vehicles there is so much going on it makes it very challenging just to look at the screen with all the different icons and options that are there to search through and use and it seems daunting to those who maybe haven't had this kind of technology before here it's real simple it's it's just an easy pretty much just one screen worth of icons there not too much to deal with overall an enjoyable truck to drive the interior is spacious a lot of functionality you know several places for storage and different little nooks and crannies and things like that and overall a very enjoyable truck 280 horsepower some might say that's not enough but it seems to be enough to get the job done for this particular model. I think it will definitely do the job. It would be nice to have a press car, press truck, uh, one of these ridge lines sometime where I could actually hitch a trailer up to the back and maybe 
tow something and do all of that good stuff, do a little towing, a little hauling, put some items in the bed and see how it does. It would be very nice. But I'm just going to have to tell you right now that I don't know how it would handle in that respect. Maybe some of you can tell others down in the comments what your experiences have been like towing and hauling with the Ridgeline to kind of make up for what I'm just not capable of giving today because I haven't had that experience. So tell me what you think down in the comments section. Is the 2023 Honda Ridgeline RTL the ultimate gentleman's truck? That should bring about quite a few interesting comments from people who still say, it's not really a truck. That's how their voices sound. You know that when you read the comments, you can hear it in your head. <laughs> so tell me what you think. Tell me what your answer is and tell me why you answered the way that you did. Got to say a special thanks to my friends here at Holmes Honda for loaning me this Ridgeline for the day. If you want to know more about this Ridgeline and maybe come in and buy it at Holmes Honda, check out the link down in the description of this video. And I have to say a special thanks to all of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn about other vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now, and I'll see you there.